The human brain, integral to the survival of our species, creator of all of our civilizations. This device, billions of years in the making, is one of the most powerful computers on the planet. So complex and so esoteric, its calculations, its structures, and its learning capabilities are a complete mystery to us, which is why we're not talking about it today. Today we're going to talk about attention networks. These have been a pretty big deal since their, I don't know if it's discovery or invention in math, their discovervention. The concept itself is pretty straightforward. Um, attention allows the network to focus on a subset of the data. This stops the rest of the data from confusing the network. We can look at this from a image processing perspective. There are two ways of attending the input. Uh, we can have hard attention, which is basically making a binary choice. This data in, this data out. In other words, cropping an image. That's fine. I mean, it works. But you know what's even better? Soft attention. Instead of just dropping the data that doesn't seem important, Soft attention focuses on a particular spot, like hard attention, but instead of just throwing out the values that it's not focusing on, it multiplies them by a weight, a number less than one, uh, to weigh how much that point should affect the network. A paper called Show, Attend, Tell, Neural Image Caption Generation, yes, I'm just reading off my notes, with visual attention, uses this to caption images. <clears throat> and you can see how the network picks up the picks out details all on its own. This, as you can imagine, can help out a lot with pretty much any kind of photo processing. But you don't have to only use it with photos. You can use it with CNNs, of course. You can also use it with a standard feed-forward neural network or a RNN, a recurrent neural network. Wait, a recurrent neural network? That's interesting. Because not only do they have the input you give them, but they also have another layer called the hidden state, and that stores previous inputs. What if we applied attention to the hidden state? Then we're not focusing on spatial data like an image, but we're focusing on temporal data. This would be, in a manner of speaking, something like a memory. What could we do with that? Well, that's the same question someone at Google asked. What they found with these attention networks is that they were great at machine translation. Google actually provides a tutorial uh, on how to build one of these yourself. So we're going to look at that because it's well written, explains quite a bit of it, and currently we're in a weird transition space between TensorFlow 1.3 and 2.0, and I don't know 2.0 yet. And it's just, uh, if you'd like to learn 2.0 with me, uh, or a different library, go ahead and let me know in the comments. Okay, so this is Google's tutorial on machine translation with attention, as you can see at the top. Um, I will have this linked in the comments below, of course. Uh, note, this example takes approximately 10 minutes to run on a single P100 $5,000 NVIDIA Tesla GPU. If you have $5,000 lying around, you can train this in 10 minutes. Congratulations. I do not, so we're not actually going to run this. So here's a good image of, of the uh, encoder-decoder model that they're using here. Uh, as you can see, it is inputted into the RNNs word by word. These are run through uh, a attention layer, or the hidden states are, and that builds a context vector, which is sent to the decoder RNNs. So we'll look at how that actually all fits together. Um, so our encoder right here, uh, first thing they do is they build an embedding. If you've done any sort of neural text processing, you've probably built an embedding. But basically that transforms uh, the one hot encoded words into a uh, dense vector. Um, and then a GRU or gated recurrent unit, I think. As you can see here, when we call the uh, encoder, uh, we pass our input through the embedding and then into the uh, uh, GRU unit. And that outputs the output and the hidden state. 
So our decoder network is basically exactly the same thing. Uh, we have an embedding, uh, GRU, and then a final dense output. Um, we also uh, define some dense layers for our attention as well. So here in the call method, uh, we actually build that uh, where we have, we run uh, our encoder output through one of the dense layers and then the hidden state through the other one. This is all run through a TNH nonlinear layer and then through another dense network. Um, then we apply a softmax to that uh, so that we're, we have a score for each uh, word between 0 and 1. Um, and then from that we create our context vector which is uh, made by multiplying our tension weights by the encoder output. And then all of this is run through our embedding in GRU layer uh, until it's finally output by the final uh, dense layer. Going back to this uh, graph of the attention here, I think it's really interesting. Um, obviously you can see that end and end are correlated quite a bit according to the attention, uh, but also home and casa, which if you know Spanish, casa means home, uh, at and n, uh, but that's not as strong as the uh, at and casa. You can actually see that's kind of a area right there is all lit up, uh, showing that's kind of processing all the words together. Um, and up here as well, so are you still, uh, which would translate to in Spanish the question mark and then uh, todavía están um, which literally still are you um, so that's uh, that's really interesting the way it, it kind of just looks at not necessarily a per word translation um, but actually takes uh, sections of the of the of the sentence and processes them together um, which shows why this is such an effective translation technique. Okay, now we've gone over self-attention networks. Um, I hope you found it as cool as I did. The best thing about this, though, is that that's not even the coolest thing we can do with this. It's so awesome. Please let me know down in the comments what you'll do with self-attention, uh, as well as anything you'd like me to do for future videos. This is kind of a pilot video. If you liked it, uh, hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, if you didn't like it, go ahead and let me know what you'd like me to change in the future down in the comments. Thank you very much and have a nice day.